What's up, Behind the Chair family? My name is Cassie Siskovic, and I'm the National Artistic Director with Alpha Park Milano. We are here coming to you live in New York City at the beautiful academy. Um, it's called Hair Throne Salon, owned by Bianca Cox, a part of our artistic team. But we are so excited to be here. I'm joined by someone very special today, one of our most exciting influencer partners, and honestly, the permanent hair color balayage guru. Um, Grace and Troy, thank you so much for being here. Oh, I'm excited. I'm We're so excited. excited. We have a great class for you guys. I'm going to pass it to Grayson so he can say hi, and then we'll share with you what we're doing. All right, what's going on, guys? It's Grayson Troy, and I'm really excited today because, like Cassie said, I've been working with Alpha Bar now for a couple of months, and I'm blown away. And so what I'm going to be showing today is actually uh, one of my more lived-in looks, which is actually, you know, super in right now. And what I love about my technique is that when they wear it straight, it's actually gonna be really natural, right? And then what it allows for is as they curl their hair to show a lot of a lot of color coming from underneath, right? And I think that's kind of like where a lot of people can go wrong is sometimes that money piece can be a little too big in the front and then you pull it back and maybe it's like a skunk strip and that's not really what we want. So as you can see here, I finished one whole side of my model. Um, I did leave out the mohawk section on top, but what I'm gonna be doing is, is I'm gonna be checking for the round of the head. I'm gonna get right into it for you guys because this is really important and I know I have a decent amount of work here. So I'm gonna look for the round of the head because that kind of tells you how big that money piece can get. As you can see over here, it's a pretty fine money piece right in the front, but when you go to lift it up like that, it gets a lot heavier, a lot bigger. So when you curl it away, you can start, you can see all the work. So the first thing I do is here is I look for the round of the head, which I've already pretty much sectioned out around here. I then take about a finger length back and I kind of come in here from the side. And I'm going to be doing diagonal backs, kind of working like this. And because I don't want anything really left out, especially around the face ring, because I want it to be bright, I always tend to weave down. I'm going to use one of my Grace and Troy clips. Cute. Oh yeah, which allows you to work a little bit faster because you could just put the hair in the top and allows me to kind of go with throughout my business. So here we go. I'm just going to kind of weave this down. And the reason I'm weaving down is because if you weave up like traditional highlighting, this hair would be left around the face. So I'm going to take that and push that right here. I'm going to get my Grace and Troy baby light board. All the tools. Oh, I've got it all. <laughs> I'm going to paint the board first. Make sure saturation is really well because that's one of the biggest factors of lift. And I think something that you really can't get without a board. So then what I'm gonna do is, is I'm going to jump. So I'm gonna jump up. But the first thing I want you to notice is, is what I did was is I put a baby light right to the scalp which means is every section moving forward has to be dropped down. What I mean by that is, I'm gonna baby light on top of this regular, right? But first I'm gonna tease it because I wanna create some room. So I'm gonna over direct it like that. And then I'm, going to, then I'm gonna baby light it. And the reason I'm doing that is because I wanna make sure I leave space at the root because what I want everything to do is I want all of my lightning to start right here, the same spot as my very first foil. So every time I bring a section forward, it's gonna be a little bit bigger tease because it's gonna to have to drop down and start here. I'm gonna finish this sandwich and then we'll check out what Cass is doing. So as you can see, I'm, my board is even with the foil. I am using the uh, BB Bleach, the nine levels of lift. I really, really love that lightener. I've actually been preferring working with white lightener. And uh, it's amazing. I mean, it keeps the hair super healthy, but really does achieve the lift I need. So here we go. 
Bam, bam, lock that up. I'm gonna push this up, just kind of lock that corner in. And then I have everything here on the inside. Just gonna grab a second clip. So now that I have everything on the inside, just gonna kind of clean up over there, over direct, and I'm gonna tease one more time. And the reason I'm teasing this, especially from down here, is because I do want to break it up, but remember, I want everything to line up here. So I'm gonna just take my teasing light board, lock it in. Pretty much paint right to the tease. Saturate it. I like to layer my teases. I also like to use a different color foil when I'm teasing. And now I'm going to basically do the exact same pattern, moving forward and just starting every section around here to create depth that's gonna fall on top of the, the money piece. All right, Cassie, what are you doing? Love it, amazing. All right, you guys, so I'm over here actually showcasing the Italia Balayage, but the 2023 version. So. To give you some context, I've broken my model up into different sections so you can really see every aspect of the application. The whole back is pre-done. So I want you guys to see the beautiful seamless one that we have here. This was literally just glossed with color work cream at the top and gloss at the bottom. Um, with my model, Emma, she has this stunning natural level eight. It's um, so ashy, it's so bright, but we wanted to take her a little bit coppery, especially because it's so on trend, um, but make it really sheer and soft so she still feels like a blonde. Anytime I do these transitions, I like to ask my clients, do you want to be seen as a blonde or a copper, a blonde or a brunette? And it really helps me identify where that palette should be focused. So this whole back, if you want to come a little bit closer, you can see has this beautiful delineation of color. I'm going to touch you back a little bit. Um, and really gives, oh, it looks super cool in camera. We'll get a lot of really great pictures for you guys so you can see it in different light, but a stunning, beautiful sheer tone, super healthy color. Um, and we're just trying to replicate that placement in the front. So um, for the, the newest evolution of the Italian balayage, we're obviously really focused on maximum impact with less foils. Um, also, I know Grayson talks about this often. I'm sure he's gonna mention this as he progresses into his technique. But with the Italian balayage, I work a lot with pivots. Um, the reason why is because the head is naturally around shape. So when you're working with a pivotal placement, it really helps you work with that shape to complement it versus creating something harsh that might create contrast that you don't want. So in my foils, I've started very traditionally. I'll show you this one underneath. Um, I have two foils that I've started so far. Very, very, very fine baby lights. Um, this is super detailed highlight work. Um, simply because I want these pieces to literally look like they're growing out of her head. I don't want the blonde to have any sort of demarcation lines. I want it to be as natural as possible. So super, super fine weaves. Um, I'm using Easy Lift 7 and 10 volume. Like I said, she's so light. Um, she lifts so beautifully and so easily. She's like, we keep calling her the unicorn client because she's never colored her hair and she has this beautiful, perfect face. So I'm definitely very lucky to be working on Emma today. Um, but now as I finish up these hairline detail pieces, I'm transitioning into the interior. So this is really where my pivot point's gonna exist. I kind of see like the recession transition area as my pivot point, and I'm gonna come up this way. As I'm coming up this way, what's really nice is it allows my foils to then parallel to the part line. So then I can detail very specifically the way the hair naturally falls. Um, and if you take a look over here, Actually, it'll be nice to see Emma's beautiful face. Can you guys see this copper on her? How good it's gonna look, her eyes, her skin. It's amazing. Um, but over here, I've actually pre-done the highlight placement. So a little bit brighter, but still very natural. Again, we want this to look like it's literally growing out of our head. Um, so at the temple, to create this really, really seamless delineation of color, you wanna do super, super fine baby lights. So that's what we're working on on the side, curving up towards the part line. And again, sorry, this is what I wanted to show you. At the part line detail, really softly shattered. Very softly shattered. So we're gonna continue that on this side. And I'm gonna work again in that pivotal placement um, until I parallel with her part line. And from there, we'll start to transition into her front face cream piece. Sounds Great, so awesome. where are you at? So Basically, I wanted to save this last foil here on the, 
on the area in the fringe for you guys so I could show you. So I did move over to uh, the hairline near the ear where I just did another baby light down towards, uh, towards the skin. That way I had no leave out. This is something I did on the other side of the head. So let me just put this baby light in there real quick. And then I'll go back to the last section on top just so you can understand why it's so important to take a larger section as your last one. Because this is for a lived in look we're going to achieve here. But I do want that money piece to be noticeable when we want it to. So just lock that in real quick. So here we are, right? I finished my one, two, three with you guys. I had a baby light down onto the, weaving down onto the forehead. Then I skipped the section and I did a baby light on top. And then everything in between, I did a TZ light over directed. And then the next section, I basically did the exact same thing, starting with the baby light. And then I teased everything in between. So it's gonna be a solid blonde on your bottoms. Now this is your last section, right? And this is the one that's the furthest up. So it's almost past the round of the head. And this is the one that's, that's really important. If you notice, I teased a lot. I actually started teasing from right about here because what I'm gonna end up doing for this section is, is this is a really crucial section for this entire look because not only is this gonna act as almost like a veil that's gonna cover, but it's also gonna kind of start to break up. So I'm going to actually weave down again here because I'm gonna to wanna to leave some hair up and out of the way. So I'm gonna weave this down after I tease it a lot. Like that, I'm gonna put that back into my clip. And now what this does is this is gonna allow when that tease really, when you untease it, it's gonna create that veil of darkness, but you're still gonna have a little bit of a blend to break it up. And then I'll show you the section that we're gonna move on as we go around the head. This technique should not take super long behind the chair, which is why I love it. I like to start in the front, mainly because it allows the front to process and get a little bit brighter. And it allows like there to be a little bit more dimension behind at, since you start in the front. I love starting in the front. Yeah, I think it's something a lot of people are comfortable with. I feel like you also, you pay so much attention to the details in the front and uh, I think starting fresh at the front helps add to that positively. Like I know, Sometimes when you're working on especially a full application um, by the front, it's, it's easy to get exhausted. So I love the idea of starting in the front and it's something I do often. Oh yeah, I think we've all run into that problem where you, you overfoil in the back and you get to the front and you're like almost out of time. Yep. So that's why I think starting in the front really helps. But again, this technique is meant to be fast. But the things you don't want to do is you do not want to make this part solid on the ends and then this part not solid on the ends, right? So you have to kind of keep that trend going like I did here, right? I started to keep the dimension more towards the back, but I kept that solid front pretty much all on the end so that it'll blend into a slightly darker tone in the back, which is something I really like about this technique. So it allows you to take big sections. So I'm gonna kind of come in here. I did the baby light on the bottom. I'm gonna come in here, and I'm gonna take about a half an inch section. Eh, take an inch. And then I'm just going to tease, uh, weave the top, just regularly, like that. I'm going to apply my light there. And if you notice, which I'll show you as soon as I'm done, is the sectioning that I took in order to make this very fast. And it's funny because it, it actually looks like a really large section on top that I've left out for the mohawk section, but I'll show you why in a second. So if you come here, you'll notice that I took the round from past the parietal ridge. So the parietal ridge, you know, would probably be a little bit higher, right? But what I did was I actually stepped below it. And it's really important because the majority of the work in this technique is going to be um, coming from the bottom and the top is gonna fall on top and the top is a super quick technique that honestly, I, when you see the outcome, you're gonna be shocked at how easy it is. How's it going over there? Great, this is actually a perfect point to show you guys. So I've almost completely parallel to the part line, which for me is my sign that I'm ready to move on to this front face frame piece. Um, usually I'm very intuitive with my foil placements. So 
I don't count my foils, but I can almost guarantee that most of the time it's not the same number of foils on every client or even on either side because everyone's so different. Um, so for me, I like to use spacing indications to know when I want to move on to my next zone. Um, and this parallel line is my, my key one for the front face frame. One important thing I like to do to keep this really natural but still have like a really nice delineation of color is to carve out little baby hairs that exist right at the hairline. Um, but one thing I've, I've been trying to discipline myself in is not being so structured with that carve out, not doing a traditional weave, but really focusing on keeping it like a natural shape. So again, making sure um, I'm not focused on a perfect pattern. I'm really being intuitive in a sense that I want it to be a natural part. It's the best way to keep things as seamless as possible versus looking so purposefully done. Um, again, this is a slice, so differently from my baby lights that I've done at the temples and on the interior, this is again just to give her a little bit more pop. Um, again, I'm using Easy Lift 7 and 20 volume, or 10 volume, not even 20. Sorry, she's gonna lift so quickly. We we could have probably used five, to be honest. Um, that is the unicorn. Yeah, he's laughing. <laughs> it's crazy. <laughs> it's been it's been a really nice stress-free color day for me. <laughs> um, but then I'm gonna do one more slice, and then I'll continue into the part line, um, and just do some really fine weaves again to transition. Now, one other thing that I like to look out for with clients is the balance of blonde that they have at their ends. Um, so one really great thing about Emma is, even though she's never colored her hair, she's already had a ton of, and you can see the strawberry kind of popping through underneath now, but she already had a ton of brightness at her ends that I could work with. If your client didn't have any blonde on their ends, you would have to tip out this hair in between. And one of my best recommendations is to make sure you overdirect it forward. That's gonna essentially build in more depth towards the back and more brightness towards the front, which will enhance the movement of the design of all the blonde in your look. Um, but for Emma, we don't have to do that, which is so great. We're just gonna use the blonde that she has and kind of marry that into her natural base and give her a little bit more, a little bit more blonde towards the top. Sounds pretty cool. Yeah, that's great. So if you don't mind, I just want to show you guys this right here because this is where I used to make actually some of my biggest mistakes is I would do this beautiful face frame in the front here and the blonde would be beautiful, but even on your longer hair clients too, what I would end up doing is I wouldn't match it up with the hair coming from the back. Right, and so I hate when that happens. You could see it in some of my earlier work, like I would have these really beautiful face frames that would be hanging into here, and then I'd push it back and there'd be a lot more depth that almost didn't match up. So it's super important that as you go around, which is why I did that circular section as my, really my only section for this entire technique, uh, is because I wanna make sure that everything underneath this circular section is gonna be blonded almost equally, right? So especially down here, I'm gonna, I started again, with my baby lights, I teased first and then I baby light it down because I don't want any hair to really fall here. Because this is where when she wears it forward, you're gonna kind of see that and I didn't really want any dark spots coming out of it. So, I, uh, like I said, I teased it, I baby lighted it, and now I'm gonna apply the lightener. And I am using 25 volume lightener to start with. I know that that sometimes scares people, but luckily it never scares me, but also uh, I had the, uh, the pleasure of being able to do half her head first and I used 20 the first time and it definitely took a little bit longer than I had hoped. So I do tend to use 25 volume when I'm behind the chair. Uh, I, I like to work quick and that's why my techniques are also meant to be done quickly. And 25 volume isn't, to me, the perfect consistency. No, I really love that. I even love, um, I love playing around with formulating your bleach mixtures to complement your timing. Um, like I'll oftentimes, instead of splitting developer, which is totally fine, you can totally do that with Aqua Perk if you like to split developers. Um, I actually love changing the mixing ratio because if you mix one to one, the powder is more potent than the developer. So your lightener mixture is gonna work quicker and it's gonna be more potent at a one to one mixing ratio versus one to two. So sometimes I'll do that even if I need my half, but either approach is great. And oh, yeah. either approach works with BB Bleach, which is, Great job. Oh, I do that. I love that, actually. I think the saying is the thicker, the quicker. 
Is that a saying? I mean, Ashley Norton says that. I love it. Completely makes so, sense. Yeah, Brilliant. So uh, I do that with the 25 volume a lot. I'll actually start one to two, and as I'm moving through the head, I'll See, actually do the better. same formula. So detailed then. Then it's even more detailed with, with how you're approaching your mixtures to complement your timing. Exactly. I love it. So I'm almost I'm almost about to finish actually the entire left side of the bottom and I'm gonna have to remix and get wait a second I just weave down I'm supposed to weave up here so be, the reason I'm weaving up here is because it's the top of the sandwich here's the bottom I skipped about a good inch now I tease the top and I'm gonna be weaving regularly here because I need everything to fall in between so that I could take everything in between and over direct it and tease it. And the reason that we over direct is because really, if you think about it, if you're over directing, if you're a hair cutter, right? Like I think it's a round graduation that creates softness. Mm -hmm. So you're kind of, the idea is that you're gonna be holding everything on the round. And so that way as it falls, you're already creating almost like an insurance as of when it falls, it'll be more on a diagonal back. So I'm gonna just tease that up. Find my lightener here. And then I'll show you exactly what I mean when I say I'm gonna hold it diagonally uh, when I go to tease. And here's where, here's a little trick I like to do, especially in the back where, you know, you wanna make sure you connect the, the front and the sides to the back, but sometimes like I don't wanna just weave it Okay, so what I'm gonna end up doing here is I'm gonna take everything in from the back and I'm gonna over direct it because just think about this. If I'm over directing the hair and I were to put a straight line into that hair, right? As it falls, look, look at all the slack right here that's already forming, right? Which means as you know that this is gonna drop. So basically if I'm over directing when I apply it, as it falls, it's already falling on an angle like that, which is gonna, it's like insurance. It's also gonna create much more softness. So I'm gonna come back here. I've noticed that there's a little bit of small hair. I'm gonna just toss that to the side for right now. I'm gonna just start to take that and push that tease back as much as I can. Notice that I've moved her chair in order to create uh, the over direction. So then I'm gonna pick up these guys. I'll do the exact same thing. Just kind of push her a little bit. I'll take that together. Make sure that I'm kind of getting some of those from the ends. That way it's gonna be a really soft transfusion. One of my favorite golf drinks. <laughs> Thanks, I love, I love the jokes. And I'm actually going to paint this into a V using my board. And I'm probably going to need to go and mix up some more after this. Pretty hard. Remind me of your formula. We can. Um... Can get it yourself. Uh, it was... Pilot 9, 25 volume. Uh, yeah, one to, one to one and a half. Okay. 20, well, 25 still? Yeah. Okay. Make it 28 and a half. Ooh. <laughs> <laughs> We're technical with our proportions. 28 and a half is a top secret um, <laughs> developer that my assistants have been trained on. Um, you know what I love about that? Um, I'm just thrilled that you're measuring your lightener. How many of us actually measure? Oh. I can tell you that. Oh, oh I, I don't like when people don't. <laughs> <laughs> well, it's crazy. Um, it's, it's crazy how much more lift you can get when you're purposeful with your lightener mixtures. Like, I totally get wanting to mix to your preferred consistency, but the performance of the product, it will literally be better if you mix it um, and measure. 100%. So if you're not doing that and there's one thing you can take away from us today, maybe it's that. Just <laughs> measure, your, measure your lighter. Measure your lighter. <laughs> All right, cool. I'm on my last interior foil here. Um, actually, I don't know if you want to come a little closer just for this one. This is a little technique that I really love um, incorporating. Anytime I'm looking to, kind of like Grayson said, I think connection is the key. Like you want to make sure all of your blonde placement design is connecting, connecting the front to the back, connecting the top to the bottom, um, really enhancing that blend. 
Sometimes what I would do in the past to kind of connect the interior to this front face frame um, is I would do like a, like a brightening weave, if you will. So very, very soft shatter towards the interior and then like a bold sliced piece. Here, let me get my foil behind it so you can see. So there, then you have like a little bold, bold pop of color here and then diffusion on the interior. But to take that a step further and even modernize this placement even more, I'm gonna take my micro light or my baby light and really blend it as close as I can to the front and still get a little bit more density of blonde towards that front piece, but way, way, way less. Um, we talk a lot about the modernization of balayage and just you know how the technique and trend in itself has evolved since it started, which feels like it's been forever. Um, but I definitely think some of the trends that we're seeing are, are softening of contrast um, and being purposeful with their gear contrast levels. And one thing I love about what Grayson and I are showing you guys today, um, his face frame and placement design is a little bit higher contrast, but it still has a modern feel because everything's connected. Everything is very purposely focused on connecting top to bottom and front to back. Um, so conceptually, it still gives you, I guess, less contrast overall, but the option for a high contrast in results, and mine's gonna be much lower contrast, which is cool, two different ones. All right, so what I'm doing now is I'm gonna just connect the top. And the whole purpose of this is, like I said, so that when this hair is gonna now fall over all of the work, it's gonna be super natural, super seamless. Your clients can wear it. They don't have to worry about it, you know, looking, absolutely perfect or they don't have to curl it or anything like that. It's just going to be super natural and super seamless. So the idea is that the, the top half, everything above the parietal ridge or in there is going to most of the time have that layer in there or it's going to be shorter, right? So it should just beautifully just fall uh, on top of that, right? So basically what I want to do is, is I want to create a subtle diffusion from the top to the bottom. And how do I do that? I'm going to be taking larger sections and I'm gonna tease them a lot and then do extremely fine baby lights. I mean, I'm gonna decide on the size of the baby light based on the texture of the hair. So my client allows me to take those baby lights a little bit smaller, which I'm happy about. And I can also take more thinner sections, right? If somebody had, sorry if I'm hurting you. Um, if somebody had thin or thicker hair, I might have to take larger weave sections in order to get that baby light to be noticeable because you never want to make him disappear in somebody with like a lot, a lot of hair. So here's my first section. I'm just going to come in here and I'm going to tease from down here because I want the diffusion. I want to make sure that at the end of it, there's going to be a lot of depth still saved. And I'm even most likely going to have to go back in and add a low light and then wait till you see how I do that because that's going to be definitely different. So I'm just gonna get that tease in there and then I'm going to just take very fine baby lights. To connect, this is gonna act as my diffusion, especially when I go to color melt later. That's what's gonna be that soft blend at the root area. Now what I do is in the beginning, I try and get as close to the tees as possible. Sometimes I'll even paint onto the tees, but I'll do that. And then as I work my way back to the head, this is gonna get further and further away because I do wanna create that halo approach or that halo look where it gets darker around the crown. So this one right here is probably about an inch away from the hairline. And then I have this right here as my leave out. And so I'm gonna come back here. I'm gonna take a tiny leave out section. And then I'm going to take about another half an inch section that I'm going to tease and I'm going to do a really fine baby light on. So you can see how quickly I'm moving through this section here. It's, it, it's taking me no time to finish this half of the head and the whole time. So again, I'm gonna take this. I'm gonna start my tease right around here. 
because I do want there to be that, that coverage when I untease. But notice I'm pushing it close to the scalp because I want to make sure I, I, I get my lightning up there still, but not like all the way down here. So then I'm just going to take really fine pieces. This is going to ensure that it's a soft blend when the hair is just falling straight without any waves or curls or anything like that. The client can just wake up and go. And now that's the pattern I'm going to do all the way to the back. And as I get to the back, it's going to be where it's almost underneath the crown. It's going to be even, it's going to be even larger and it's just going to be super quick. Cassie, what, what part are you at over there? Love it. So I'm moving on to my basing and toning. This is one of, I think, one of the most important parts to really finessing and perfecting your balayage. And especially with the Italian balayage, that so much customization comes in at this point in the service. Um, so on Emma specifically, let me tell you about my formula first. So I am using a combination of Colorwork Cream and Colorwork Gloss Toner. My Colorwork Cream formula is a combination of our 9.3, so just a gold level 9. Again, I didn't want to take her too much deeper than her natural, keeping it low maintenance, um, but still warming her up. And then I did add like... <laughs> like an inch of 8.44. I know sometimes it doesn't register, so I say an inch because I think it's much easier to measure it. Um, even with grams, sometimes it like won't show up for me. So an inch of the 8.44 just to really brighten it up, give it that little bit of copper influence. One thing I noticed about Emma is her undertones are warmer, but her surface tones have a little bit of pink influence. So. You know, champagne can complement her, but because of her undertone, having a little bit extra warmth is gonna complement it even further and make sure that the warmth that we give her hair doesn't wash her out. It's it's enhancing her natural palette. Um, so the 844 is kind of my insurance to that. And I also added Rose Copper Booster um, just to give her a little bit more of like a strawberry influence than a copper influence. Um, so that's her base formula with color red cream. Um, mixed one to two with our five volume activator. And I'm just going through and softly applying to the base. Um, my initial application is what I like to call my oxidation line. So this is where I'm fully saturating the hair with product. Um, this is also where it's going to be the most opaque or I guess technically the darkest. Um, from here to create a truly progressional base, this is where I'll let this, I'll apply this first and always apply it to the area where I want it to be darkest first. Um, so you can see I'm kind of staying off the front hairline and I'm staying off that front face frame piece as much as I can. And I'll stay off of the, the temple area where I added those really fine detail highlights uh, that look like they're growing up her head. And then once I establish my oxidation line, that's when I can let it process. My magic number is usually eight. I let it process for at least eight minutes and then I'll go through and start creating a progression line. So a progression line is created with my comb and this essentially creates a blend and gives you the same tonal value of the color you formulated, but it diffuses it down. So it really ensures that there's no demarcation lines and that you have a truly seamless base application. And I think doing this the correct way is really important. So I'm just gonna tap these bottom pieces and then I will start to comb it so you guys can at least see. So just to show you the motion, we're gonna let this sit for, for the predominance of it, but to show you the motion of a comb down, um, fine tooth comb, so make sure you have something that has, you know, teeth that are close together because that ensures you have detail in your work. I know a lot of people actually also love using combs with a little bit wider teeth um, and a pointer even where you can really be distinctive of, of where you're pulling the color down. Um, for me, for this look, because I want it to all kind of be cohesive, fine tooth. So I'm taking my comb and I'm going just below my oxidation line and I'm gonna start to comb, but notice how I'm pulling the comb out. Um, this is a common mistake that I see a lot of people make where they're dragging the comb all the way through the bottom of the hair and now your base is progressing into your ends. And, and in my case, I really want these bright because we wanna make sure we can get this beautiful sunshine, bright, warm blonde. Um, and I wanna keep it at a level 10. 
So it's, it's a very technical. You want to make sure you keep the ends completely separate and make sure with your comb motion, you're pulling it outward toward your body so that you're not dragging the color anywhere where you don't want it. So I'm going to let this part sit and then start the rest of her base progression and comb it down. From there, I'm going to dampen her ends and then I'm going to use Color by Gloss Toner. We love Color by Gloss Toner. Um, her formula here is actually one of my favorite platinum shades. It's just the 01004. So you guys can see it's just a super sheer, gorgeous, diluted iridescent copper. Um, a perfect way to kind of complement this, this new palette for Emma, um, but still leave her feeling blonde. I love using Color by Gloss Toner for those clients that still really, really want to feel blonde. It's like... It helps me breathe to know that they're never going to be too dark. You can always go darker, but going back is terrifying. That's what I tell every time. Yes. <laughs> we will tell you lighter just in case. Just in case, yes. So I'm just finishing up here in the back. If I pull this hair up right here, you can see that I have just this much hair left. I'm almost done in this last section. I basically just do a big tip out. Uh, my sections are getting a lot larger as I move to the back now. You can see how much hair I have here. And basically all I'm going to do is I'm going to give it a good tease because I, this is all about now diffusion and just leaving as much depth as possible. I don't want to over lighten. So I'm just going to take it and I know some people are probably scared of big teases, but I'm sure I can show you guys in this video how to untease hair properly without it hurting. Because that is uh, an art form and, it, and once you master it it's actually really easy so you can see the size of this section and I'm really just kind of going in here and I'm taking it pretty small because this isn't about too much lightning in here it's kind of more about just that depth right this is going to act almost as an umbrella it's going to sit on top of all the work that you put on underneath and it's going to fall right into all your work and make it look seamless really that's kind of what it's all about uh, as soon as I'm done too I've already mixed up talking about the colorware gloss I have my low light mixed and ready to go and I'll show you how I'm going to apply that. So let me just finish this part up right here. As you can see, I'm just throwing it on there. I'm getting it as close to the tees as possible. <coughs> and then I will show you guys how I apply my, uh, my low light. I'm also super excited because Grayson is using shades that are actually not available in the US just yet. Uh, I think they are hitting our distributor stores here in the U.S. probably as we speak, um, and they'll be available for you guys early next year. But these are new collection shades. If you guys are familiar with Alpha Park Milan Professional, we get a new collection every year from Milan of blended shades that coexist beautifully with the current trends they're seeing, Pantone Color of the Year. All of those things are considered when we create a collection, and this collection, um, it's our census collection, all of the shades have a mahogany base, and it's so amazing. Our version of mahogany at Apple Park is a mixture of red and violet, um, denoted as a five. Um, but I love the end results that Grace got because um, I'm sure he'll talk about this more. Oh yeah. It just makes it uh, way less scary. Like it's not scary at all to use these, especially now I love seeing it on the palette that he's created because it's a very natural end result. Yeah, I mean, I think it's the kind of thing that some people might want to almost like stay away from when they read the numbers. Right. Because you might have all these ideas that it's going to go red or it's going to look pink or it's just, you're not sure what's going to happen. It's going to be super warm. But I mean, I used uh, two of the new tones actually on my model, two different shades. I used a 1005 in the front and a 945 in the back. And I think it's absolutely stunning. I mean, I think there's, it's really something I would use on a daily because you can't go too cool with it. But it did it did tone where you can almost see the cool tones, but then it also gives you that there are warm tones in it too. It, it's really just about lifting properly, I think for that. You know, yeah. I, I think that's kind of the secret though when it comes to most toners is being Absolutely. able to lift properly. So um, I can't wait to get a little bit more into that when I get into my color metal in a little bit, but honestly, I was blown away with what the 1005 did and I lifted her to a 10. Uh, where I used it and it, it's just stunning. Honestly, in person, it's it's incredible and I have some photos I can't wait to share with you guys too. So I would definitely not be shy and try the 1005 if you ever get the opportunity. And the 943. Yes. I'm actually looking forward to using, uh, what was it, the 715? 
because it's uh, seven, 751. 751. Yeah, I can't wait to use that one. No, I love that one. There's a lot of cool new shades. If you guys want more info on the new shades, just message Alpha Park. Um, and we'll make sure you have all the info. So I probably have about two more sections left until I start to do my low light. I'm just kind of starting to establish my progression line at the top and I want you guys to see um, with the progression line you can clearly see where the oxidation line stops right so this is what I mean by oxidation line the color is fully oxidizing and fully saturated so at this point you're gonna get the most coverage and then from there down I'm really melting and blending again keeping my, my comb motion very, very structured, very um, disciplined so that I'm not dragging color where I don't want it. But once you master this, you can kind of do, like, do you guys see how I'm creating a progression line within my pro progression line? So again, doubling up the blending, really making sure um, everything's connected, everything's soft, but your comb work is really, really, really crucial to mastering this. Um, and then I even, I'll, I love using my gloves um, just to ensure I'm getting a little bit more, more coverage where I want it. Um, so it's definitely important detail work and it creates such a stunning progression of color from front to back um, if you can master it correctly. So I'm just going to continue working through this, creating those beautiful progression lines and it is good, it is good to check it, no, both sides. So you can even still see the progression line from here, right? A beautiful diagonal coming this way. So she's gonna marry beautifully into her front face frame and still have that gorgeous strawberry base that, that cascades lightly into the blonde. I can't wait to see that finish. That's yes. Really awesome. Me too. Emma too. <laughs> <laughs> I feel bad I didn't even introduce my model Tanner. She's <laughs> She's under there. She's under the her. Foils. <laughs> I can't see her yet, but I'm, I'm just waiting for the reveal. That's no. really that's really what it's about. Grayson is also, if you guys, um, I'm sure most of you already follow him on social media. And I learned this, I learned so much from him on social media to begin with, but today in working with him and doing a live class, when I tell you this man has all the gadgets, he has all the fancy tools, he knows all the technology stuff. Content creation is definitely a strength of his, and oh, yeah. I'm looking forward to continuing to learn from him as we work together, but today I've, I've already learned so much. So if you guys see uh, his content on content creation, uh, soak it all in. <laughs> uh, yeah, I appreciate that. I'm actually, I'm actually doing a class this year with uh, Samantha's Beauty Confessions, oh, and we're, we're doing it just on photography and social media. I love it. I love it. I yes. want to take a yeah, it's going to be cool. Yeah, we're doing four <laughs> classes. we got four classes. We're going to be in Oklahoma, uh, Georgia, California, and Pennsylvania. Wow. So you just let me know. A whole tour. Yeah, it's going to be good. It. Me and Sam doing that. It'll be fun. Yeah. All right, so this is my last foil here, and I'm actually going to have my team member and uh, friend Jax here help me. Uh, her Instagram is uh, Zero Jax B. Uh -huh. So she's part of my team uh, and travels around with me to help apply the low light. Um, we're actually going to need another brush, sorry. This one? Yeah, we're going to need a second one. Oh. One, two, three, two. So, I like to kind of consider myself organized chaos sometimes, right? And <laughs> this is when I, I wanted to figure out, right, like, what is the purpose of teas, right? And I, I teach that teas is not really meant for blending. It's meant to depth. maintain depth, yeah. So, if you have too much blonde and you're teasing, all you have to really do is throw your low light on that tease, right? Because it's the depth you don't have or it's the depth that you might want. So in order to work fast, I found out that I could literally just take a something, you know, I, I sometimes I'll use like the permanent color with 10 volume, one to one and a half or one to two, and I'll just really saturate it. Or I really like to use the uh, color wear gloss here and I will just literally get it in there. So Jax is actually going to kind of do the exact same thing with me. Uh, yep, just kind of start anywhere over here if you want. We can kind of just throw that that way. Do you want to like do it in between here too? Yeah. Perfect. Yep. So it's literally not about, it's just more about saturation and getting your hands in there and 
just getting everything covered. I like to use the gloss because it is, it is definitely more wet and it gets the hair, it like saturates all the hair a little bit easier than if I were to use um, a permanent color. But if I were to use my permanent color, what I would pretty much do is, is I would just uh, pre-spray the hair a little bit with water just to kind of get it ready. I'll go in here and just kind of make sure it's hit as best I can. Just making sure I saturate all the T's and the leave out any leave out because I'm just trying to kind of create an overall shape. If you looked at her hair when we first started, it did kind of look a little one, like it just kind of blurred into it. It was okay. I mean, she was beautiful, but the hair was, you know, it was just, it needed to be done. And this leave out? Uh, no, you can saturate that. Saturate Yep. So here's a perfect example. I'm trying to maintain this depth. I want to add a little bit more vibrance to it. Maybe I want to make it a little bit darker. So I am just going to come in here and that's why I like, again, like to use the color wear gloss because I can really feel it as I kind of squish my hands together. I could get in there with it. It's a little dirty, <laughs> but that's how I like it. That's, 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 no, that sounded worse. But, Oh, Grayson. Love it. Blooper <laughs> reel, blooper reel. Try to make it better than the other No, I love it. Blooper reel. <laughs> so I'm just gonna get that in there. And you guys, I, um, so you know our color wear gloss toner shades, we, we've newly added the brunette shades. So Grayson's formula, it's, Grayson, it's a 05N. Jax? And it is a three of uh, 735. Seven, three, yeah. Yes. So you have the darker options to do this, and I so, I cannot tell you how much I agree with Grayson on the fact that if you're saturating back comb, a liquid-based toner makes that so much easier. So and I love with Color Wear Gloss Toner that um, you can still see it processing, and it also, it honestly makes the hair look and feel incredible, healthy, perfect, and, perfect shimmery low light. And I really love the smell. Yeah. <laughs> we were, we've been talking about the scents all day. Apple. Yes, a beautiful green apple scent. <laughs> we love it. So you guys, I'm continuing to, to finish up my detail work here. Um, you know, I definitely mean detail work when I say that. This is meant to be something that you can hopefully take your time on and really get right, especially in the front, especially on a blonde that really wants to maintain brightness. Um, once I have my, my nice progression line established, um, and I give it at least again, eight is that magic number, um, time to process, uh, which we're past, I can then go through and melt in my gloss or my toner. Um, this is where color gloss toner comes in. So I'm actually, I'm going to run and grab a water bottle really quick. And we're going to just dampen the ends. I'll take out this front piece again. And then what I love about Color Bar Gloss Toner is you can totally melt this right over top of your cream. And now that, again, the, the cream, what's really nice about it is it's a cream to gel viscosity. So if you guys notice right now, it looks more like a gel. Um, when you mix it in a bowl, it looks like a cream. The nice thing about that and the reason for that is it ensures that it's not, it's easy and, and kind of loose to apply, but when it's actually on the hair, the gel, it stays where you put it. So it allows you to be a little bit more precise, but have the mobility um, that you're used to with something that has a little bit looser viscosity. So I'm not worried to melt this color right in, and that's exactly what I'm going to do. It's so funny you just said that because I felt like before I mixed it in a bottle, and now I have it in, in the bowl. Yes. And it does feel like more creamy. Yes, totally. <laughs> That's a very purposeful, real thing. It's amazing. The science is always so interesting. Yeah, it's crazy. So we're melting this in. And one other thing um, I'll mention now to you guys, you know, full disclosure and transparency. On Emma, we were actually contemplating taking her a little bit brighter. Um, so one of the things I also love about Color Bar Gloss Toner is I, I have the options to easily adjust her palette at the shampoo bowl if we do decide to go a little bit brighter. Um, and it makes that really easy for, for your client. Um, I know for me, I need something that allows me to make adjustments on the fly quickly, easily, and um, precisely. 
And I love that about color wear gloss toner. So I know even if I drop this down a level or add a few pigment drops to, to enhance the intensity, um, I'll be able to see right through it. So I'll be able to see very clearly how the blonde is looking, how it's processing, how it's taking the color. I'm not sure how it's showing up on camera, but I can already see a lot of the warmth starting to show through. And it almost, it's making her blonde look healthier. Sometimes I think with really blonde clients, when the blonde is so empty, that's when, I mean, it looks empty. It can, it can look a little bit more fragile than it actually is. So by adding in this little bit of warmth, it's, it's definitely gonna give her a stronger looking blonde, a healthier, shinier looking blonde, and a warmer, strawberry looking blonde. We are almost done over here applying our low light. Perfect. And then we will be letting her sit for probably about 50 minutes. I believe that's, you know, that's one thing I think I really like about the Alpha Power Lightener is that, you know, it says the recommended sitting time is 50 minutes, I believe. And I just, I love it. And it's in that 50 minutes, I pretty much achieve everything that I want to. So it's definitely been a go-to lightener since I picked it up. And I worked with my last lightener for almost seven years. So I haven't been able to find anything that I like more. And now I'm in love with Alpha Power lightener, so. I love that. And I love that timing isn't, isn't something that you want to sacrifice. Like, I love that that's a really important benchmark for you. I, yeah. think, I think it's important for us as colorists to have those non-negotiables because it's it's just as much a science as it is an art. Oh, yeah. I've actually never, I didn't know they made lighteners as healthy as Alpha Bar's lightener. Oh, yeah. Built-in bond builder. You got everything you need. Yeah, it's actually really impressive. And, oh, sorry, guys. This is also really exciting about our BB bleach. Did you know that we repackaged it? It oh, comes in bags now, which are sustainable. Love that. So what do you that's, mean by sustainable? So it's much. It's a sustainable material. So we're, we're helping the earth. For the earth. <laughs> He's like, what do you mean? How is that going to make you keep your product? <laughs> a different kind of sustainable than you're thinking, but nonetheless sustainable. I always, um, I, I do this a lot behind the chair and I know at first it might seem scary, but I promise you this works 100% of the time. 100% of the time. As long as you fully saturate. No, right. I even love that for um, corrective situations. Mm -hmm. A lot of times if you're working with a blonde that has a really brassy mid-tone. Oh yeah. It's I've, such a helpful way to negate that. Oh yeah, I've done that 100%. I've, I have a technique I do where it's like my full lightning service. It's like all ends bleached. Mm -hmm. And uh, I do this as like a color correction. Yeah, I love just it. Just by adding it back in. The same exact technique, but I just add the, wherever I do my large teases, I just drop the, drop the, the low light. You want to just pick it up a little bit? Thank you. And then I should go into it. So you guys can see already next to her skin, this oxidation is looking so beautiful. Oh, I can't wait to see and show you guys the, the full end results. Um, with Colorwear Gloss Toner, I am gonna let this sit for 15. Rinse it, check it, see how intense. If we wanna go any more intense, I can always do another gloss. Um, but we're gonna assess it. Either way, in the after content, I'll share with you guys what that final formula looks like so you know exactly what we used on her to achieve it. Um, but that's the predominance of my Italian balayage technique that I wanted to show you guys. Um, of course, if you have any questions, please pop them in the comments. Grayson and I will, will jump in and make sure we're answering any questions that maybe we haven't answered while we're teaching. Um, and please connect with us. You know, after this class, I, Grayson is one of the most approachable, cool guys I think I've met in the industry. So. Um, I know he'd love to connect with you, and, and same for me as well. So if there's any questions you guys have or anything you want to talk through, um, please feel free to reach out to us because we're here to support you. Yeah, if you have any questions about Alpha Bar or you're interested in even trying it or using it, definitely hit me up. Um, I, if anybody has been following me, you guys know I already pretty much answer every question I can. I'm always out there trying to help people, so if you guys have any questions or whatever, let me know. Just keep in mind, I didn't, I don't always do the low light. I'm doing this because I'm just starting to have fun. So like, I was like, <laughs> we, we might as well do that complete thing. But if this person 
you could have just left it. I could have just left it out and not even added that low light, but I felt like this is gonna even spice it up a little bit more. So I kind of gave you a little bit of a bonus there with that. Um, like a couple, like three techniques in one. And uh, I'll probably be able to show you guys my color melt technique in a little bit. All right, so here we are, I'm in the color melt. I've already applied the root. Uh, this side's already been color melted, so I just wanna kind of show you exactly how I do this. Um, so basically, this is the furthest part, and this is where I want you guys to see the angle in which I'm creating. I am going to basically make sure that all of this melt is gonna cover here, because this is really important in order to hide all the blonding that we did underneath. So I'm gonna just kind of start by brushing it down towards the face instead of backwards or away. I'm gonna come in here, take a section like that. I'm going to then hand that off to Jax. I'm gonna take that. I'm gonna then come back in here and I'm gonna also continue to shorter here and I'm gonna push that down forward like that. I'm gonna come back in here again, make sure that I have everything. And look, you can see as I lift up, the blonde is closer and closer. So for this one, I'm gonna just hit underneath it. I'm gonna come down and I'm still gonna sit on top of that blonde right there. Bam. I'm gonna take one more section here, making sure that I can get everything underneath. I'm gonna come back in here. I'm going to just lift up. I'm gonna tap that root right there. Hold on for a second, thank you. Okay, so now that I've applied this, what I'm gonna end up doing is I'm gonna take my lightest formula, which is my beautiful green brush. I'm gonna take this right here. Okay, and now what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna actually apply the 1005. The first blonde that I put in is right around the hairline. It's gonna be right on the face frame, the money piece. And then just to make sure that that blend is good, I'm gonna take my my dark color again, my base color, I'm gonna put it there. I'm gonna kind of create that third, like a third tone by mixing the two colors together. I'm then gonna go over to my G box. And I'm gonna just stick that there. <laughs> Sound effects are half the battle. I always tell a client that they should get nervous if they don't hear me making any sound effects. <laughs> so then I'm going to come back in here and I'm going to slice that off one more time. Here we go. I'll start here this time on top with my 1005, which Cassie, that was a uh, mahogany, right? With the... You got it, yeah. A level 10, like iridescent mahogany, which I think is so nice for what you're doing. Yeah, it gives it an... I mean, I'm, I'm obsessed with the front tone. I'm gonna be honest with you. I could use this probably on 90% of all my blondes. I love it. Yeah, like it's, it's actually amazing. So again, I'm just gonna saturate that really well. I'm gonna just come back in here with my darker color. Just kind of clean up that base area. I'll create a third tone. So it might look like I'm pushing it back and forth, but I'm actually just kind of Going like that. Bam. Again, back to the G-Box. The G-Box is important because I do like to tone this section going forward. And I like to make sure that I can rest it right on the face like that. Tanner, how you doing, okay? Good. Tanner's good, I'm good. <laughs> I'm gonna then come down here and I'm going to just saturate again using my 10. And now I can ensure this, this is going to ensure that the front piece is going to fully have time to do whatever it needs to do. I do tend to believe that permanent color toning does need a little bit of extra time to make sure it gets the desired result. The desired result, yeah, that, that was it. Okay, that didn't sound right at first. I was like, hmm. <laughs> so I'm gonna then come in the back here. Just gonna hand it up. I'm gonna do the first section because this was that connecting section I think I told you guys about. I'm gonna do that with the 1005. 
I'm gonna let that sit. I might even do just one more section with the 1005. And then what I'm gonna do is I'm actually gonna to switch to a secondary tone because remember now, there's really like two different areas of the head that you're gonna be focusing on. It's everything underneath, which is gonna be that brightness and that like real pop. And then everything up top is going to be more of your, um, it's gonna be more of like your, like your, 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 what's the word I'm looking for? Like your overlay. My overlay, it's gonna be my diffusion. That's the word I was looking for, right? So here we go, Jax. So now it's super important to make sure that you bring your base color down as far as you need because remember some of these pieces were teased a lot and that tease can actually make your color drop a little bit. So it's super important that you hit that a little bit further than you may think with your base. So that's why I like to apply a base, then go back in and reapply a base again. So I'm gonna stretch that down pretty far. And now I'm gonna hit my new tone, the nine, four, five. And I'm going to, see how I left a little bit of a gap there? Well, that is key because I'm gonna marry that tone together in that midsection, bam. And now that's basically what I'm gonna do going all the way forward uh, with these two tones. Perfect. Cass, how's your mouth coming? I'm ready to tone the other side of my model's hair. So while we finish up our models, we're gonna go off camera and just get our formulas together, get our posts together, and share all of our work with you guys. So thank you so much for joining us today. Thank you, Grayson, for joining me at the Academy. It was so wonderful having you. Thank you for having me. And we'll see you guys next time. Thank